what is brumation? And why do some people force their bearded dragons to go into brumation? What's up, YouTube? So brumation essentially is the hibernation that happens in bearded dragons. Now, not every bearded dragon in captivity will go through brumation. This is something that it's just in their DNA. This is something that's just part of their instincts. They will sleep whenever they feel the temperature is getting cooler. So essentially, that's how it works. So if your bearded dragon feels like the temperatures are getting cooler, they will go into brumation. Now, people wonder, well, what if my house never gets cooler? What if it's 70, 72 the whole year because of AC or heat? Some people, myself included, think that bearded dragons can sense the pressure that happens outside. The weather pressure, temperature pressure, all of those pressures change the barometric pressure that happens on Earth. That's what I feel bearded dragons can sense. Obviously, some people think they don't sense that. I don't really care. I feel like if it's the same temperature with all year round inside, how do they know to go into rumation? Then there's other people that think that if they can see the, out, the out, outdoors, so if they can see through a window or something, if they're in a room where there's a window, they can see the light changing. So that means they can see it getting darker earlier or taking longer to get light. So people seem to think all of these things can cause brumation. Whatever the case may be, they can go into brumation. And sometimes they don't go into brumation. Right now, I have several bearded dragons that have gone into brumation. Brumation can also be mistaken for other things. So some people think that when their bearded dragon has parasites, they're actually going into brumation. So before, usually before September, because brumation season is from September to March, before September, I usually try to either treat for parasites, that way I know for a fact that it's not parasites causing brumation or symptoms of brumation, or you can get a fecal done just to be safe. Now, treating for parasites is something that I do twice a year just to be safe because I have to order bugs and insects from some so many different sources that I never know which ones are actually clean. Um, and I have bought from clean sources before and they came with parasites. It ha really has nothing to do with how clean they keep their facilities. It's more so how clean they keep their bugs. So their facility could be spotless, but if they're in the tote, it's just nasty, then that means the bugs are probably going to have parasites. So you never really know what you're going to get. So I just treat for parasites just to be safe and call it a day. Treat twice a year after brumation and before brumation. So March and September. And uh, just like with dogs, you have to treat dogs with parasites, uh, I think, twice a year also, especially when they're puppies. So, no, actually, when they're puppies, it's like every two months or something like that. So it does happen with other species of animals where you do have to treat for parasites ever so often because they are exposed to parasites. Now, there is also a bunch of other things that can cause symptoms of lethargy, lack of appetite, and all of these things that also are seen in brumation. So when a bearded dragon is lethargic, it's because they're not, they're not moving. They're very, they have no uh, energy whatsoever. Lack of appetite, that also happens in bearded dragons. They don't eat when they're brumating. That is literally how it works. Now, there are people out there that there's two different ways you can do this. You can leave their lights on like a regular schedule. They're going to sleep regardless. Or if you just want to turn the lights off because they're not using it, you can do that too. However, bearded dragons, because this is not like hibernation where they fall asleep the entire time, bearded dragons are, because this is brumation, they can wake up randomly for a day and go back to sleep for two weeks. They can do that. So if you do decide to turn off your lights, make sure you're also getting an idea of when your bearded dragon is waking up. So if you're not available all day to make sure that your bearded dragon is waking up and you turn the lights on, I just suggest leaving the light schedule on the same as it was before because that's what I do. Um, the only time I ever turn off any lights is when all of my bearded dragons have started brumating and I'll just shut off all the lights altogether. But in this case, for example, just looking at this enclosure behind me, this dragon has not gone into brumation. She's too young. This dragon has gone into brumation. Uh, these two are going into brumation and this one's going into brumation. I could shut off this entire rack, but it wouldn't make any sense because I still have one that's not in brumation. And all of my racks are on the same timer. So if one gets turned off, all of them get turned off. 
And I could obviously just take the bulbs out, but there's that's no no reason for that either. Because brumation, while they may sleep, they usually are out in the open. Like, for example, this one here, she's all the way in this corner back here. She can't see any light. These two are sleeping on top of their hide, so they are actually experiencing light. They're just not moving. So that's another thing with brumation. Brumation could just be lack of movement. It doesn't have to be sleep all the time. So there are different ways that your bearded dragon could brumate. And also, when bearded dragons are brumating, usually when you bother them, they do get a little bit irritated and they might hiss or might like puff up or anything like that. And sometimes, bearded dragons, I don't know if you guys know this, but the spikes on the sides of their torso, so all around their sides like that, whenever they get inflated or agitated, they will spread them out, making them harder. And those spikes actually do hurt. If you ever have made a bearded dragon angry while you're grabbing them like that, those spikes will go into your skin and they will feel uncomfortable. So um, they will do that if you try to pick them up while they brewmate. And obviously, if you try to pick them up any other time when they are unaware that you're picking them up. So those are a couple of things I want to talk about when it comes to brewmating. Um, again, brewmation, brewmation season is from September all the way to March. They can brewmate for one week, one day, or the entire six months. Then we also have uh, treating for parasites or checking for uh, getting checking for parasites, doing a fecal before brumation season. Um, do it before brumation season, September, because if you wait till they're brumating, then that kind of defeats the purpose, right? Because then you're essentially checking for parasites to make sure that they're brumating for a good reason and not for parasites. Uh, so if you just check before, more than likely you'll be able to leave them at peace when they are brumating. Now let's talk in, into the reason why somebody would want to force their breeder dragons into brumation. So let's start with breeders. Breeders will force their bearded dragons into brumation for two reasons. One, they get an off season. If they are, if they do not have to feed, if they do not have to give food or turn on lights or anything like that, that's their off season. I don't have an off season because I do so many holdbacks that I do that. Like for example, right here, one of them is already in this rack. This one has uh, two, three, four, five, five holdbacks in this rack over here. So I can't turn off this one over here. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six holdbacks. So there's, yeah, they're all over the place. And then the one that's in there has probably a few holdbacks as well. So no, actually, that one doesn't have any holdbacks. So technically that one could be turned off. They're probably all going to, no, they're not all in brewmating either. Uh, there's only three brewmating in there. But either way, I can't turn off all the lights because there's too many dragons in each rack that is essentially not brewmating. And I obviously people are like, oh, well, if that's the case, you should just put bearded dragons of the same age in one rack. That way, if they all go to sleep, then, you know, they're all going to. Well, I don't do that. I <laughs> organize my racks based off color and genetics. So over here, I have yellows and oranges. And anything that I want to pair with a yellow and orange. So that means I have my zero over here because I want to pair her to one of my dragons over here. And then over here is all of the reds minus this one is a yellow. Uh, the reason she's in here is because I didn't have room over here um, with the yellows. So there has to be a little bit of uh, expansion whenever we move in here. And um, everything else is a red. And then over here we have yellows as well. You can tell that yellows are kind of just spread out everywhere. Um, yellows as well with the het wiblets and um, the het zeros, het zeros. Yeah. And then that one over here has the het wiblets and the het zeros only. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have 20, yes, 20 enclosures. And uh, most of them, I've sold some adults this year. So most of the ones that have multiple of them are holdbacks that. They're just still growing. So, for example, this one has three of them in there, but they're all probably like this big, so they're not too worried about it. And uh, same with this one has two of them in there, but they're also like this big, so I'm not worried about it. But, yeah, where was I talking? Well, I don't even know what I was talking about. The lights. I don't turn off the lights because I don't get an off-season. I have too many dragons that do not brewmate because of their age, and that's the next thing. Or, actually, I forgot to mention that. Bearded dragons usually, usually do not brewmate before the first year of age. Usually... They can brewmate after six months. Typically, they don't, but they can. And usually, for sure, after the first year of age, if they are going to brewmate, they will brewmate. 
Now, I have heard of people have bearded dragons for several years, and then they never brewmate, and then one year they just brewmate. No clue why that happens, but that's why it happens. The second reason why breeders would force their bearded dragons into brewmation is because brewmating actually causes bearded dragons to breed better the following year. So it usually causes a lot more egg follicles, a lot more clutches. There's no, I personally don't see a difference um, when I do this, but I also don't keep my bearded dragons long enough to see a difference because bearded dragons can live up to 15 years, but I like to retire my bearded dragons around four or five years. And if they are late bloomers, so they didn't breed the first three years, then I'll do up to six years. Usually I try to get three seasons out of my bearded dragons, but that's the reason I don't really see a huge difference because typically the first time I breed them, there's a first, first timer, so they don't lay a big clutch uh, or many clutches that season. Then the second time they start progressing, third time they start progressing. But I never see like a huge jump like people say with brewmating. So I'm not too sure if that's actually a case, but I know people say that that does help uh, for them anyways. So why do brewmating anyways? It's part of their DNA. Why? I've heard of people try to stop it. Why try to stop it if it's part of their DNA? Why force it if it's part of their DNA? If you force it, that means they didn't naturally go into brumation. If you stop it, that means they didn't naturally go into brumation. Let them do what they want to do when they want to do it. It's not that hard, people. I understand the reasons behind it. That's perfectly fine. You don't want your bearded dragon to go into brumation because then that means you don't get to see your bearded dragon for however long, maybe a day, maybe two weeks, maybe six months. Whatever the case may be, there everybody has their reasons. I personally will let them brumate if they want to. Um, typically, they do brumate because um, I brain fart. Typically, they do brewmate because usually the temperature in here, because it's concrete floors, does go down a little bit. Like, uh, it's, I think, 73 in there right now. But in this building over here, uh, there is insulation going around. I don't know if y'all can see it. You got you can't see it from here. There is insulation going around all the way up to where the wire, or all the way down to where the wire is. Because I have the second inspection actually today uh, when I'm recording this video. And um, so whenever he approves that the wiring and everything, I'll insulate the rest of it. And then I will put drywall up and the flooring is next. Woo, man, it's happening quick. We only have, so wherever there's wire, I don't have insulation. So there's two places there. There's about eight places here, all the way across up here. All of this has insulation. Uh, most of that side has insulation. This entire wall has insulation. Almost that entire wall has insulation because there is one where the light switches are. This entire wall has insulation and that entire wall has insulation. So we're getting there, y'all. We are getting there. We are getting there. So with that said, bearded dragons will more than likely go into brumation when they feel like it. Um, you can try forcing it. You can try preventing it, but they will go when they want to go. Yes, if you lower the temperatures because you want to force it, they will more than likely go into brumation. If you raise the tem temperatures because you don't want to force it, they're probably still going to go into brumation because that's it's in their DNA. It is what it is. Like these temperatures got lower in here. They're probably, uh, let me see what it says. So it's 68 in here in the enclosure anyways, and they can handle down to like 65, no big deal. So 68 in their enclosures right now, it's probably like 70 in here, open space. But like I said, the concrete makes all of the heat go up because it's really cold down here. So it's probably um, getting warmer as the temperatures go up or, what, or as the enclosures get higher. Uh, but other than that, that's, that's probably what causes them to go into information is temperature, in my opinion. Um, but I also think barometric pressure has something to do with it, in my opinion. And with that said... If you made it this far into the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. As always, peace.